if I could then I would, but I can't so I won't I got better things to do with this bottle of hope If I could fly I would fly, but I can't stay afloat Above the clouds, so for now I'm playing cool on the ground We broadcast live in Technicolor Cue the canned applause, and you can sing the songs If you can stand the noise One thing, I think I should confess to it I keep hope bottled up and faith in a jar next to it I'm painting this picture, while everything around me is changing directions My life is stranger than fiction I got this government grant studying the science of sleep But at night when I lay down, I die in my dreams I'm trying to keep this dark secret well hidden But I fell victim, now it's harder than hell's kitchen I can still cope with the dangers I'm facing Cause I can find hope in the strangest of places Find me in the basement, making my spaceship Little help from my friends and a whole lot of patience And no, I'm not trying to reach the stars I'm screaming fuck the world and getting further from y'all This is uh, Yuvalo Fear with Yo Miami. You're listening in for episode three of For Yo Inspiration. Uh, we're sitting down with Jay Bellici, also known as Remote. Uh, you can find him at Remote Rock. That's uh, R O C at the end on Instagram. Um, he's a graffiti artist uh, who also dabbles in street art, and we'll get into the distinction street a little art. more. <laughs> we uh, we we talked a lot about that with uh, Trek Six, who was our first. Uh, interview and uh it's something i want to talk to you about a little also because you come more from uh, graffiti <laughs> and less from street art yes. um so uh tell us a little bit about because i mean you've been around and you've been active in the miami or south florida art scene for a while uh where'd you come from how'd you end up here <laughs> i know the answers obviously but for our listeners yeah um <clears throat> i grew up in boston and um i i to give you, uh, basically, I graduated high school in '89, so I'm. I was I'm, born in '87. I have, yeah, I've been around. <laughs> I, I I was uh, an active writer, uh, mid to mid '80s to early '90s in Boston. I'll clarify for people who aren't necessarily from the graffiti world: when you say writer, you're not talking about books. Correct. <laughs> um, yeah, I was a graffiti writer, style writer. Um, running around the city, doing my thing. Um, from about eighty, I would say like eighty-five, I was dabbling, and by eighty-six, you know, I was I was doing my thing. And from that point on, I was active um, up until about ninety-one when I left the city. I left Boston. I was still active, but I left. I feel like with with. Uh graffiti as opposed to street art it's more of uh, an impulse it's almost like you know kleptomania or a yeah. more positive thing that you can have an impulse for but um i feel like there's you know there's guys uh trek being one of them who you know no matter how much you kind of uh start getting away from or i guess i should say how, how much you start getting into more of the legit side of the art world um making it more of a career let's say than a, a passion or a lifestyle uh, there's guys who it doesn't matter how successful they get or how like, Oh, I don't need to do that anymore. Like I, my name's out there already. It's not, that's not why they do it. And it's, they just have to keep doing it no matter where they get in their life. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the motivation is, is definitely different and the times have changed. So when, when we were doing, when we were doing stuff on the streets and, you know, back then it was, Strictly for us. Yeah, there was no uh, Instagram, no uh, street art pages, no. No, yeah. I mean, it was for for the gra the graph community at large in in Boston. You know what I mean? And you wanted to make sure that everyone that was active saw saw you and and you know knew that you were around, knew that you you existed. So. I think the difference with like you said, like today's uh today's world and including graffiti like as opposed to street art it's uh back then you were doing it for your community for the people who you respected the people who you uh knew or didn't know personally but knew of from your neighborhood from other neighborhoods around yours yep. uh it wasn't something where oh i'm doing it 
as a means to an end, meaning I'm not <laughs> doing it so oh, I'm going to get the next gallery show or oh, Absolutely you know, this not. brand is going to no. see me or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, no. There was no, there was never anything like that. Although, I mean, there I can remember there was, um, you know, a friend of a friend knew somebody who um, worked with a Playhouse. You know, like they did plays in there. Okay. And they were like, "Oh, can you get your graffiti friends to come?" <laughs> I guess, and yeah, and set we design. <laughs> we thought, you know, we we went to this place, and the guy was like, "Yeah, here's." He had some blank canvases. It was and we were like to to us that was like wow we're it, we're official you know what <laughs> I mean we're, it's like a museum show back we're doing <laughs> yeah something you know and the guy was like just do whatever you want you know just paint whatever it is you want but so it wasn't for necessarily like a set or because you're saying it was canvases I think it was it was for a backdrop or something and mm. he was like he didn't I don't think he knew what he w- was looking for he just had people paint right I, we I have no idea what happened to those or you know and it was. Just have to one. dig around on the internet and find these. Uh, I'm find sure this we, play. you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember exactly, but I'm sure we just left and went bombing for real. Right, <laughs> it's like that was just like uh, the warm up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so how did you end up? I mean, I guess to, with as much or little detail as you want to get into, but how would you, how did you find yourself in that in like the graffiti world? Because it's not generally, from my experience, it's not like you just like wake up one day like oh I'm gonna do graffiti. Well. <clears throat> so I grew up drawing as as a kid like I was always into my crayons and coloring and you know I went to uh at a at an early age I was at like a progressive school I went to the Waldorf school hmm. up uh from like kindergarten to fifth grade or something like that um and it was like big focus on art there you know and that was rad my dad was an artist and a graphic designer, and back then explains. Uh, Cause I always see him, you know, like uh, like posting it, like commenting and oh, yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, that one's good. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely critical, you yeah. know, and I appreciate it. You know, it's uh, it's cool. But so he, I was definitely inspired by by him, and um, you know, I would go, you know, you're a little kid, you know, raid raid dad's studio. He was in the house, you know, and right. um, you know getting his markers out, exacto knives, cutting up boxes and building stuff. And I'd waken him up at like seven in the morning on Saturday, you know, <laughs> right. Saturday. like, dad, look what I made. And, and it would, he'd be like, big eyes, like, holy shit, this kid was in my studio. Like, <laughs> like you know, there's like, so much danger. It was <laughs> more about like, this kid fucked my shit up. And right. I was like trying to, you know, look, look at how, you know, I was proud of what I had made or whatever it was. And, right. Um, but yes, I was very, uh, I, w- I was definitely inspired by him. My whole family, uh, on both sides, you know, we got chefs and musicians, and so it's, it's in my blood. And uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah. yeah. And so, but what did he think? I mean, you know, obviously graphic designer, artist is not necessarily, especially in the okay. 80s or 70s. How, All right. What, so, what was his view once it started being like, oh, that's that's me up on that wall, or did that ever, I mean. How yeah. long did it take till you were like more open about that with him? So, so yeah, okay. I guess as a young man, I was just into drawing and being, and then, you know, this hip hop culture sort of emerged as I was growing up. You know, I discovered Curtis Blow and Run DMC and b boying and you know, uh, gr- graffiti art. You know, and the books. You know, there was. I think it was a book called like Can't Stop, Won't Stop or Hip Hop Don't Stop. I can't remember what it was. But there was like literally illustrations of like the B-boy and the graffiti writer. And I still can see that that illustration in my head to this day. Dude's rocking like, uh, you know, a duffel bag on his arm. And he's got, <laughs> you know, and I was like, that's me, you know, that, that that's me. I'm right. that guy. Um, and, you know, I got the balls to you know steal my dad's biggest marker you know i think it was probably a magnum and proceeded to go around the corner from our house you know we lived in cambridge mass which you know somewhat uh urban and i i just i wrote my actual government (laughs) name right on the on the side of the uh corner store it's like rule number one of graffiti yeah don't write your actual name (laughs) and you know they were you know 
I think I can't remember if it was my mom or my dad. And they're like, "Did you write your name on the wall <laughs> around the corner?" <laughs> and that you know, it was so p- first time I got busted was f- from them, and it was obvious because I, it was like a concrete painted wall. Uh-huh. So the marker that I used got all you know tore <laughs> like up. they found the evidence. Like, yeah. Was, all right, I didn't use this. Wasn't me like that did this to this marker. Like, you know, so that was the very first time, and it was it was pretty innocent. So they were like, ah, uh, whatever, you know. Boys will be boys. You can't use that. Expression don't do that anymore, again but... anymore. You know, type of thing. And they, did, I don't think they just figured it was a fad, you know, because right. it was at the time something that, you know, b boying, you know, the whole thing, right, was like a fad. Never right. thought it's like, oh, it's what the kids are doing nowadays. It's, it's like boring. every subculture or counterculture. At first, it's like, oh. Yeah, that's what the kids are getting into now, you know, and some things like Tide Pods hopefully are just a passing thing that we get, you know, we move past quickly, but then other things become ingrained and become like take on a life of their own. Yeah. So it definitely, um, that was the beginning and it never ended for me. And it's, you know, it's part of, it's part of who I am now. So, and how, how, uh, I guess so. There's a, a second part to this question that I'll get to later. But so, how do your uh, how do your parents or your family in general um, how do they react now to the fact that like I guess what was the timeline or was there like a shift where they went from oh you got to stop doing this to like oh, okay I get it you're gonna do it and you're doing well at it at least and you're you know I guess um, well I think it was for my mother it was more like out of sight out of mind she didn't want to know. Right. <laughs> Even if she did know, part of herself maybe knew, you know. Right. But um I was I was a pretty bad kid. Um and that was part of it for me was that like um when I really got into it and it was like the rebellious act of it right. was kind of part of my persona at the time. Where I was like, You want me to do what? Oh right. well, I'm gonna do the ex- right. exact opposite. <laughs> so right. um I would say on my dad's side, it was more like he was uh, supportive of pretty much anything artistic. So he would just, yeah, I I don't recall exactly what he, you know, what he would, but it was, it, I'm sure it was more like, don't get in trouble. Right. Like as long as you're staying away from like, you know, fights, drugs, whatever, like the, the kind of, as long as you're using it for good and, you know. And <laughs> yeah, he it was more about the art for him right. you know what i mean so he if he recognized that i was being artistic in some way then then he would be supportive he was always not supportive of you know breaking the law in any way but right. otherwise <laughs> right he so. picked his battles yeah you know. <laughs> all right and so how did you end up from uh massachusetts down here in miami well so i uh well that that's so <laughs> the long story yeah my uh all right so we only have an hour my parents uh split when I, like as i was getting into graph my parents split okay. um and that so like when i said my my rebellious persona right you know the, the, i was like really rebelling against uh you know this this new was like okay we're gonna move over here we're gonna be a new happy family we're you know moving from sort of a shitty neighborhood to a to a nice neighborhood and it was like and i was like just like not having it right. you know um my dad moved to switzerland like about a year or two after that and um <clears throat> and He's scoping out basil for you in advance <laughs> <laughs> well him he had been working out there uh on and off like they would him and my mother would travel there for work and so, yeah, he moved to Switzerland uh, shortly after I uh, started. I think like sophomore year of high school, he moved there. And um, so I finished high school just by the skin of my teeth. And at that point, um, just wanted to be as independent as possible, even though I was I was still a lazy high school, you know, right. like so I. I it, my idea was like, oh, I'm going to get my shit together. I went to mass art for uh, for school, and I was working at a design firm, like in the shipping and handling department or something. <laughs> Not actually like drawing. No, no. <laughs> Designing. 
uh, they would let me use the the you know the tables like after hours and <laughs> stuff. You know, because back then it was like literally the drafting tables. You know? Right. And I would do homework in there, um, and still you know active writing when I had the time, and um, uh, basically you know what happened was I I got a summer job on a on a ship, okay. on a schooner like a big sailboat. And um, and that was my first sort of thing away from Boston, you know. Right. And um, and I fucked that up. I got fired. <laughs> like after at least it month. wasn't like the Navy or something. You no, know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I come back home and my mom's like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, oh, "It didn't work out." And she's like, "Well, you're not staying here." <laughs> well, so now what are you doing? Right. Exactly. <laughs> And uh, I had um, I had some connections on Nantucket Island, and so that's like from Boston. It's it's like three or four hours away. Okay. Bus ride, boat ride. It's actually longer than that. But anyways, I went. My mom was like, "I'm um, you know." She's like, "Figure it out." I go, "Okay." A week later, she wakes me up and she's like, "Get your shit." We're I'm taking you to the Greyhound, and I was like, "All right, well, let me eat breakfast first. She's like, "No, no, no." <laughs> Get your shit. I'm taking you right now. This was like one of those things. She put me on a bus, paid for my bus at least, you know. And was like, and that was it. I moved to Nantucket that summer and uh, figured shit out out there. And I s- proceeded to spend the next four summers out there bartending and driving a cab. And Actually, I didn't bartend. Um, not yet. I, I drove a cab and painted houses. I so still kept it somewhat, you know, you're getting the art, you know, the art uh, in where I, you could. I was still, yeah, there was, whenever I could, I was I was on Nantucket Island, like, amidst a bunch of, like, you know, trust fund, preppy people, and I was totally out of my element. I only know Nantucket from the rhyme. Okay. And I don't um, even remember the whole rhyme. Yeah, and I was not really, like, it, I'm sure it was some people's, like, yeah, this is amazing. And it was cool. It was just not, I wasn't, I'm, like, this urban person, like. Right still in my urban gear and like i didn't uh yeah i didn't, didn't mess, feel I did, like at home it was, i didn't mess with these people huh? but um but it worked out and uh so i i would go out there i'd make a ton of money every summer and then I, like the next that following winter i came back to boston and got my own place and I well not my own place. I sublet a room right. in a in a in a. You uh, moved that. You moved out of your out of your mom's house. Exactly, <laughs> with a bunch of college kids, and you know, s- still writing, doing my thing, in, and now independent in Boston. Um, the the winter after that, I went to. I saved enough money to go to Europe, and so I spent. Uh, I spent. The basically from October to April in in Europe, I went to London, one way ticket for two hundred bucks. <laughs> Back then you could do that; you could buy a one way ticket to London. That was crazy, and uh, and my dad was still in uh, Zurich, so I would use that as a home base. Right. I would go and work for him a little bit. I'd make enough money to go somewhere, so I would go. I went to Rome. I spent like two months in Rome. I spent a couple of months in London. Um, but basically stayed in, in Zurich with him for the most part. Right. Um, the, then summer in Nantucket, next winter I got into snowboarding and I moved to Vermont, snowboarded there last summer in Nantucket, then moved to Colorado because I fell in love with snowboarding. Right. (laughs) And I lived in Colorado for four or five years, snowboarding and you know, doing graphics for small ski and snowboard companies. Mm. Are there any designs that, like, lasted that, like, we'll still find, like, in the store somewhere? Not in the store, (laughs) no, but I have have some, some, uh, you know, some tees and hats and whatnot from back in the day. Um, So, yeah, Colorado was amazing, and I love that place, and it's sort of a home away from home. I was so ingrained. I, I really sort of got into just the lifestyle there snowboarding, working, and partying. And that was really pretty much it. There was not much time for my art at the time. I didn't make it anyways, right. make the time. And I came to the conclusion, I'm like, I got to get my shit together. After a couple of years, and I'm, I found a school in Arizona, 
left. I'm like, I'm going to go back to school, get my shit together <laughs> and take myself out of this equation because I knew if I tried to go back to school in Colorado, I probably right. wouldn't have actually followed through. Um, two years in Arizona, design school, got an associates, uh, met a girl there who <laughs> who became my wife. All right. And we're, we're together to this day. Love, love her. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, so, uh, you know, Arizona... I graduated school. She was going to get transferred to either Seattle or Miami. Oh, and man. Your life could have been so different. I know. Seattle. <laughs> she has family in Orlando. So um, she was like, you choose. Where do you want to go? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> right. This is <laughs> like, we're going to Miami. Of course. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to ask her, you know, move that far away from her family. She has family in Orlando. So right. that was it. That was the, the deciding factor. I had and, nothing to do with the weather or the or the lifestyle or the, the, mm, li- the uh, lack of rainy mountains. Possibly. <laughs> you know, at the time, you know, it's funny because I had friends in Seattle. Right. You so, know? It was like the so for me, it was like, like really I could have gone either way. And honestly, I if I if she didn't have that family in Orlando, we definitely could have ended up there. Right. Um, so moved here in 2000 and um, uh, yeah, you know worked in advertising and design here and there till about 2005 and went back to school for web design at our at the art institute wasted a bunch of money on that (laughs) but uh met a bunch of good people that that i've i still have in contact with and have made plenty of moves with i think that's the story of college really is (laughs) spend a lot of money meet some people and hopefully you meet enough of them that like carries you into like right. the next phase of your life that i think that was my the most valuable thing is the people that i met there because the schooling was definitely not it um and maybe the drawing some of the drawings i did during the, you know the lectures and stuff right <laughs> the doodles are what are what really like uh what really helped you get to that next level yeah actually i'd look forward to doodling and you know lecture classes well everyone you know gets gets what they uh what they're supposed to out of schooling. And I some guess, people it's right. out of the books and some people it's the experiences that they have, you know, on campus while they're there supposed to be reading the books. True. True. So do you remember so you got you came here in two thousand, uh you said school was two thousand five, so like about five years and uh so do you remember the first so already at this point was like did you already ha were you already writing the name remote or Okay, yeah, well, when Remote was um, was my name back in Boston, so I always kept the name. Um, when I started, when I was here, uh, and I started, like, painting canvas, I was bartending in the Grove, like, part-time, as I was going to school and doing design and whatnot. And I was at this restaurant where, it's called Cafe Tuju Tango, where they would have people painting like in the mix, you know, and there's art on the wall, yeah. And um, oh, pioneers, they started that back in 2000, <laughs> 2005. It was the place was badass, actually. <laughs> and it was really busy. It was a lot of fun to work there. Bartending was a g- great time. It was, uh, it was fun. And the Grove was back then was was uh, slamming. And uh, I meeting, started started UM in two thousand five. You did, did so you? So maybe I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so uh, so back then, so when I was going to school and bartending, I'm in the Grove, and um, I had talked to some people about opportunities as far as, like, there was a club, there was a new club just opened up there, and some guy was, like, trying to get people to put artwork in, in the club, you know? Right. And um, I was also... The change, the more they stay the same. It just <laughs> happened. <laughs> right, and back then it was like, you know... so i wasn't painting i wasn't being active i wasn't i really didn't know anybody were you tagging still though or like are are you keep it right so you're lumping you know i tell you what i kind of like in the late 90s when i was going to school in arizona and when i moved here i was not active right you know when i and i i was more like relationship now an adult it's that whole thing where like i spent most of my young adult life like 
fuck these conformists. Like I'm right. not, I'm not that person, you know. And then I finally meet this girl. It was like I'm like, oh, I could, right. I could have a, a life with this person, and sort of made an effort to to be the person that I think she wanted me to be in some way, you know. Right. And it didn't have to do with me vandalizing, you know, or you know, putting my name up wherever I felt right. like it. And like she uh, knew your name and that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we also, shortly after we moved here, we got pregnant with our first child. So uh, sorry, like, all right, I'm like, all yeah, right. like I, <laughs> Take it I'm, I'm going to be a productive member of society, and, you know, <laughs> get my shit together. And, and that's really, you know, to me, it was like, it didn't include graph out outside. Anyways, I right. always did it on paper. Right. Um, and you know, on the computer as well. Um, so, what were we so how did I'll, I'll uh, so, take us yes, in, a, in a new direction? So, so then you're at that point, you're kind of living a different life. You're, you know, still doing art in a more um, legal or a more not traditional, but in a more kind of a, it was uh, strictly digital. sterile setting, we'll say. At the so, time. how did it end up that? Because obviously now you're you know you're known uh, more in terms of your art, in terms of, like for graffiti and right. and at least uh, incorporating elements of graffiti into like more of your abstract work and things like that. Uh, how how did you get back into it? And do you remember the first wall? Without maybe giving an address, <laughs> like, well, what's the statute of limitations? No, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the first wall that you tagged once you started up again? In my right. So, yeah. Um, back to to you know to the Grove and uh, guy, what's his name? Uh, Paco from Butter Gallery. He had a huh. gallery in the Grove first, mm -hmm. and so what I was talking about, you know, like. I did a couple canvases. I actually put a canvas in his in his uh, gallery, and there was just sort of like I had met Alex Yanez through a group show that we did at that club that I had mentioned earlier, and um, they have this Coconut Grove Art Festival, right? Mm -hmm. And every year it was a big deal at the restaurant where I worked at, and we would make a ton of money, and you know all the artists that that um worked at that painted at the the restaurant it was a big deal for them too at the time coca walk was where yeah. the restaurant was it wasn't doing so well there were a couple of empty spaces and uh we finagled a space for the coconut grove art festival in coca walk to they were like yeah you can have this space put artwork in it mm -hmm. and use it as you know to show your work during the festival the irony that you had to like work to make that happen, you know, back then and today developers and, you know, and business owners are like begging or not begging, but they're expecting or I guess that's what set the stage for like now it's expected like, oh, we have this great space. Put all your work in it and make right. it look nice. Like, Well, it was back then, you know, because I was still green at the time. I course, hadn't been yeah. painting. And everyone's got to pay their dues. Yeah, and it was like, oh shit, let me make some I make some work. Right. So I can put work in here. And it was me and Yanez and a couple other guys. Um uh, I I soy, I think. It was like exclamation point S O S O Y exclamation point like the upside down one. Right. You know. Isn't it just soy? Like soy, I, I guess, yeah, Spanish, yeah, 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 exactly. Um Good dude. He also bartended. Unless he was Asian, then it could go different. Ways. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he bartended with me as well, and uh, it, we were the three dudes that opened that space, and then eventually we got a couple other artists in there. And um, what happened was the the festival went so well, they let us keep the the space, nice. and they're like, you can keep the space for ten percent of sales, and it was honor system. So right. we basically had a clubhouse in. Coco Walk for for about a year, we had it for a year. Uh, it fell apart, you know, at some point. And right. We as, all as we all yeah it's like, yeah exactly. World. <laughs> but it was a great time, and that for me was uh, my sort of my entree into like the scene. I met a bunch of people. I met Rainier Gamboa. I met um, uh, Junk from FDC crew. Right. Uh, plenty of guys and people that even like are like, oh yeah, I met you at at Alex's gal. Because everyone thinks back then Alex is a you know he's a prominent dude here in Miami. 
I mean, everyone knows him. He's blown up recently, like, but back then, I mean, I can't tell you how many artists that have told me stories. Oh, I was showing at Transit Lounge when Giannis was doing a right. show. Right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He he was in charge of Transit too. So, um, yeah. So we did that, and basically, uh, from that point on. Uh, so, side note: when I was painting there, I was painting under the name of Fifty Three, and I was signing my canvases and everything Fifty Three because I was trying to push. Uh, on apparel line a limited edition apparel line <laughs> everything was printed 53 times numbered and signed and ahead of your line. time yeah. <laughs> well, do that now it'll blow up <laughs> uh, so uh i did i think i did like we did about three three li- three t's but so why t-shirts. 53 i don't know i thought you know what what's a good number actually you know like i dug the two numbers together right and like visually, i was like aesthetic yes aesthetically um, and also, like, anything under 50 was kind of retarded. Like, right, so it was more about production runs. It was, <laughs> like, really, and we, even 53 was kind of ridiculous, too, because then you have to choose, like, if you, because now you could, like, you know, put a design out online and have people order it, and then you could print them all after. Right. At the time, I'd, I'd be like, okay, here's the design. I'm going to print 53 shirts, and now I have to decide how many smalls, mediums, and right. large, extra large, double, right. you know, like was crazy i still have some of those <laughs> uh so yeah i was painting under the name of 53 at the time to push that line um and as that came to an end i you know i started like i met crave there as well um at the at the gallery and yeah just continued painting i'm you know met people in the scene and it just you know as I started painting graph related shit, I was like, okay, yeah, remote. You right, know. you kind of went back who I to, am. Your, to your roots. Yeah. No, I didn't go, you know, so I had never left it. It's just I wasn't pushing that name. Right, right. I'm saying, like, because you didn't have the specific project or, you know, like, um, thing that you were pushing, like, with 53. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to go back to me now. Like, I'm not doing this project or this right. brand. It's, yeah. I'm just doing me. Yeah. Um, all right. And so, um, so what, because, you know, we talked a little bit about those, like I would say, you know, the golden days, uh, which are even, you know, it's before I kind of started, I started getting involved in like maybe 2009, 2010. Um, and when are the golden days? Just well, I'm saying then the days when we could do what we wanted and didn't have to think about like what was the social media engagement and how I are see. we getting sponsors? It was right. like, oh, here, have this spot and then like do it in a way that's going to cost you, you know, minimal out of pocket and you know, hope that you're going to make it back by maybe, you know, getting a few cases of beer or a keg or something. And <laughs> and then, you yeah. know, it's it's more about, you know, the opportunities to do the things that you want to do in the way that you want to do them than is this a commercially viable project to take on right now. Right. And I feel like everyone, if it's the artists, if it's the producers, like more on my side, or if it's even businesses, I feel like it's gotten, I mean, business maybe was always a little more, but um as the arts in general uh which i think it's like phases it's not necessarily it's not a new phenomenon but uh as the arts become more not only accepted but in demand uh in more kind of mainstream settings uh whatever the art you know whether it's graffiti or whether it's you know more traditional art and whatever it is um it it's become a commodity in mm-hmm. a way where it's like oh which artists do you work with like wh- it's not sure. about oh are you doing these things are you giving the newer artists an opportunity to to kind of like we said pay their dues and and get seen in ways that they wouldn't normally uh, mm-hmm. be able to um so so that's i want to say the golden days it's like you know i guess it's it's more to us than a necessarily a golden age like a time period where oh everything was better than like no it was just you know we were able to do things the way that we wanted to do them before the weight of responsibility for this thing that we were you know because we were building something right um and so what i guess that turned into a rant but the question (laughs) was what do you miss most about those days I miss guess I, I, t- I touched on what I miss most about those days, but what what do you miss most about those days? I don't know. Like, um, you know, I'm. I guess 
You mean the difference is basically you're doing it like. For well, love. do you see a difference? Uh, in, you know, in there's a difference back then than which, today. Well, for me personally, I, you know, like I'm always I've always painted for the love of painting, right? Or created right. because it's something in me that if if I don't do it, then I end up you know feeling funny or you know I get depressed or whatever. Right, it's it like is. musicians or you know, right, right. comedians. <laughs> um, but you add that. Um, you know, yeah. The, now, now it's a job, right? Right. Like it's saying? still what you love, but you all like it's kind of that that balance of I need to be flexible and not you know the old palm tree like metaphor. Like I need to be flexible enough that you know I can keep this going. I can keep this a viable uh, career, but you also don't want to bend so far that you snap in half and it's like oh, I don't want to do this anymore because now it's just a job. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, I mean, it's a job, dude. You know, it's a job now, you know? <laughs> and it's kind of like that, uh, beca- you know, I'm, I'm grateful, don't, you know, uh, I'm grateful for, for every opportunity and to be able to do, to be able to do what I love doing and, you know, not have to punch a clock or you know because it's a job but it's still kind of a job on your terms well the the job is is that i have to make sure that i can supply for my family you know what i mean that's and that's it like that's the criteria and then so that's what i'm saying is it's a pretty it's a very well defined but it's a kind of uh loose criteria in the sense of it's whatever i need to do to supply you know to provide for my family that's what i have to do and that's you know i'm assuming what's in the back of your mind when you're weighing you know like every job is like okay how much do i want to bend my principles you know how much am i willing to to you know uh bend my style or my artistic integrity for someone else's vision in order to pay the bills and it's making those decisions of like this job yeah you know what whatever i'm getting paid it's not worth what you know what i have to you know bend in terms of of my vision or my you know my artistic voice. Um, <laughs> artistic voice. Well, no, yeah. You call it your style, your hand style, Absolutely. or your, no, you know, no, you, you call it what you want. But it's, yeah, you're right. That's funny. Um, I think it's more true with graffiti than anything else that it's their voice because I feel like every graph writer's style is kind of a reflection or a, a subconscious kind of um, interpretation of their literal voice of like the way they talk of their mannerisms of their their style how they dress it's like all that comes out in their their letters like in the style that they write their whether it's like a quickie or or like you know more of a production piece yes i agree um i think that um the funny you mentioned that like a lot of people uh embody their their names like you know like i had a or their total opposite you know right it's like I, a huge guy that's called Tiny. Like. Right. <laughs> there was a kid named Tame in my high school. <laughs> and he wasn't Tame. And that guy, was, <laughs> he was the most wild kid. He ended, we ended up in the same crew um, uh, later, in my later time in the, in the city. Uh, but yeah, the kid was nuts. Like, he did, he did a, you know, like, for, you know, like, he did the first spray tag inside the high school you know, on the wall. And that was like, (laughs) what? Everyone was like mind blown, you know, like, holy shit, this guy. Um, And yeah, he was, he was the guy that we'd be in the, like in the middle of a busy area in downtown Boston. And he'd pull out a can and do the biggest can, the biggest tag he could, you know, and then and then he he'd throw you the can. He'd be like, right. "Here, take this." <laughs> you know, he was You're that up. guy. Like, no, it wasn't like that. It was just oh, like, like here now you deal with the <laughs> yeah, hide the can or whatever. Right. Like just a total nut. You know, like it was fucking hilarious. He was a lot of fun. Uh, so talking about cans and uh, and markers, what's uh, do you have a favorite? Uh, maybe we'll get some sponsorships out of this. Do you have a favorite brand or type of instrument? So like can marker brush like. To, to paint with oh uh, whether it's for tags or for canvases sh- i mean you know <laughs> it, i don't here's the thing it's like i i i'm a i don't bomb you know what i mean right. i'm not an active writer anymore right. so i can't i don't really call myself a writer out of respect to these cats that are out here 
doing their thing still. You know right. what I mean? Like I can see people that are doing their thing and the hunger in them and, and I love it and I appreciate right. it. And out of respect to them, I don't really call myself a writer. I did my right. thing and it's um, a it's a it's an interesting phenomena for lack of a better word because it's the same thing with trek where it's like you know and he says almost like virtually word for word the same thing of i don't consider myself a writer anymore because i'm not out there bombing i'm not holding up my you know my spots and whatever and i don't have spots to hold up and uh (laughs) you know and he'll say every now and then you know he'll have a marker and he'll be out and you know he'll throw up his name but like yeah i think he said he does like a different name now or whatever when he does that stuff but really um i I don't remember i think he said that (laughs) what um, name is that I, he didn't say it, but I'm he just kidding. said I won't. Yeah, he doesn't throw up track. Of course. Um, but it's that it's it's almost like you know it makes me think of uh, like racehorses. It's like you're you're out to stud. Like all right, I, like I don't race anymore. I'm out like to pasture. Not that like you know you're still doing shit. Come on, like man. but <laughs> they make glue out of those things. Dude. <laughs> no, the, the ones they put out to stud are the ones they like they get them oh, to have all, all the right. kids and cool, shit. Cool, cool, it's cool. Like oh, right. you were one of the good. You were like one of the the best, the best. Okay, and yeah. now you had to like you know we're taking you out of the game. So so we can get more, you know, more, okay. uh, uh, what's I'll it take called? that. Uh, I'll take that. Prize winners like you. So how do you see your role then, uh, within the, the graffiti community? Um, because I think that's something, I mean, in general, like not even just in graffiti, but with the young, you know, you got two kids. So, uh, the, that kind of responsibility to show the, the next generation, the, the rights and wrongs. And obviously every generation is going to, experience different things and they're gonna they're gonna interpret things different ways so they're not gonna be the same as us but um i feel like there's uh there's always that new wave of like the next generation like with like specifically with graffiti but in general where it's the people who are coming out to be like no like i'm better than the people before i'm gonna do it bigger better crazier i'm gonna like like you said rebelling like just for like rebelling and for like um you know if you tell me this i'm gonna do the opposite uh but i think there still needs to be and maybe there's a natural you know kind of darwinism aspect to this but there there needs to be because uh, you know even with graffiti there's rules like some unspoken and some you know that are that are clear and known um and teaching like these kids of like oh if you go over you know if you go over someone's name like you gotta know you know what you're getting into and know like you know like that kind of stuff like saying that because you're looking at me like (laughs) like i'm speaking chinese like in other words do you think that there's uh within graffiti culture that there's a place for the previous generation to school the younger kids what? Or is it an art form where it's like, no, everyone comes and they figure their own way out to do this shit? But, I mean, yeah, there's, I think there's every possible way to do it. You know, like some, some cats get into it and they don't, they don't have access to anyone, you know, older than them or, you know, cats that have been out there. And I think that that's just the natural thing of how it happens. Like when I started, nobody knew who I was and I didn't know any of these these people um and i think yeah i mean you can't just (laughs) well i'm saying like do you think it's important to have like you know things like path and like oh yeah where it's trying to to make it again because and that's the biggest like where i keep you know getting running into like dead ends and like with track like going you know like turning around in circles of like the nature of graffiti is that it's not controlled that it's not uh you know, once you're giving permission, it's not graffiti anymore because the nature of graffiti is right. No, I'm doing it because I want to do it, and because this is this is what's going to happen, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, well, I guess you know it's you. If it's not graph, it's not illegal. It's an art form. Right. Right. So if I'm if I'm doing this on paper, then to me it's it's a way of writing on paper. It's not graffiti. But the, that's what I, you know, that's, for me, it's part of my art. So I I love this art form, you know what I mean? Whether it's on the street or on paper or on a canvas. Um, the the soul, the essence, the heart of it is on the street, and that's where it belongs. Um, but the art form, you know, that can be practiced anywhere. 
um, in your studio at home on paper. Uh, and I think there can be as much a love for the art form as there is for the the act of it and the fact that it exists on the street. You know what I mean? But do you really think that? Because I kind of feel like, you know, it's been like over the years and it's really just clarifying in my mind now, but I don't know that graffiti wants to be really loved or appreciated or like maybe subconsciously, but I think there's a conscious kind of, and, and it, it, it's partially kind of related, I think, to the whole, the, the, I don't know, beef isn't like really the right word, but between like street art and graph now where it's like, oh, these like, you know, art school kids are coming out and, and painting murals and, you know, fuck them. And if I see like during Basel, you know, like you hear that a lot around like, you know, 24th sure. Street and, you know, some <laughs> like depend, you know, you have the street art like zones and the graffiti zones kind of uh, in Wynwood during Basel. And, really? Zones? I'm not, I'm not zone, but I'm saying like obviously if you're on the corner of uh, you know North Miami and 24th you know yeah. or 25th you're more likely to run into like graph guys than on Northwest Second and you know in I front see. of Panther Coffee or whatever oh, like right. I'm saying certain streets whether it's because they're less you know scrutinized or less you know well lit or certain streets get bombed more and especially over the last few years as winwood has gotten more attention on it like for you know for basil and they've tried all these ways like oh how are we going to stop the bombing during basil and this and whatever like the winwood bid like they've had meetings about that of Did like how, really? do, how do what do we do this year they like, had meetings about that yeah like i heard about like because i was dealing with with uh business owners uh over the years who you know i'm working to get murals done for and it's right. like oh this year there's like a standard letter that all the business owners like this ended up not working, but all the business owners, you know, have to have this letter like authorization, whatever. And all the artists have to uh, have it on them and they have to submit it to the bid ahead of time. And this and that obviously is like way too big of a um, an undertaking for it to really be executed. But, you know, it's it's a conversation that they had. It's something that they tried to put into effect to be like, oh, how do we prevent graffiti during Basel? in Wynwood and I'm like that's <laughs> that's what you, that's what you're here for like that's why the neighborhood has become what it's become is because of the those people and yes people like primary and whatever it is you know like early early and like whatever you want what is it like 2008 2009 yeah. started maybe bringing a little bit of order to the chaos of saying oh we're going to bring in certain artists and we're going to give certain walls to certain artists and it kind of uh, took away from that natural selection that you know maybe well, happened more before. True, but back then there was, you know, all you wanted to do was paint by the RC. Like in 2008, right. if you weren't painting by the RC Cola plant, you and you were, let's say, you were on 25th, or you know, if you were like in a ghost town, you're right. like, oh, you got some crappy wall, right. you know, like. But that's then, what I'm saying is it was like who got to paint the RC Cola factory? It wasn't right. like. The kid, you know, Johnny, you know, Johnny come lightly that like walks up like, oh, hey, all right, I'm just going to paint on this wall. I mean, no, right. it was something that it had to curated. be earned or that you, you know, you were in the right crew or that you had the, you know. Yeah. I mean, those guys made it official. Right. Uh, so that was kind primary. of the beginning, but it was right. That's what I'm saying is they made it more palatable to the developers, to the, the, the people who own the buildings and the businesses. And it's like, oh. You mean it doesn't have to be this wild, wild west of just like the letters? Like everyone's always like, oh, I don't want letters. <laughs> like that's the biggest thing I hear when I'm talking to someone uh, about a mural. It's like, oh, I don't want letters. And I'm like, what's oh, the problem what's with letters? letters? <laughs> I don't get I, it. If, see, and here's the thing is they don't really mean letters. They mean graffiti and they mean tags because you could have uh, like Z1 just did, you know, that mural on 24th by 5th. And he has like the scroll on it or whatever with the, the, the quote, the saying that's words those are letters but it's they're not graffiti letters <laughs> come on but that's what i'm saying is it's become you know what i mean and that's like the it's just the the easy way for people to oh letters like because they don't know the difference between graffiti and street art for them it's like that's the way they distinguish between the two right all right so a few other things and we gotta start uh wrapping it down. up yeah all right but um so all right, we had a little bit of like let's say philosophical tangents. Sure. Um, but so what are your hopes for where, you know, we talked a little bit about where, you know, how the Miami scene started or or a part of it started. 
uh, and how things are today, like what, either what are your hopes or what are your, what's your vision for where the Miami art scene is headed? Um, whether it be graffiti or just in general, the, the art scene in terms of, you know, are we at a peak? Is it going to keep growing? Is it, are there going to be more opportunities for artists? Are there going to be less? Is it going to, you know, I don't know, man. I think, um, you know, obviously Wynwood is done, you know, like, but see, you say obviously, and <laughs> well, a lot of people who aren't, let's say like invo- as involved. What I, okay. What as I mean is the... like, it's not, if you know, like what, five years ago, I'd be like, Ooh, let's go to art walk, you right. know, like, and go look at art, right. you know, and it, and if you weren't, if you were just a regular Joe, you, you'd be like, Oh, you're going to Wynwood? Like, right. you know. I mean, already they'd be like, what's that? Or, know. or, you know, <laughs> it, know you know, it is. It, it, you know, um, it was still raw. It was still like, there was still things happening, you know? And now it's, um, th- I don't really go to Wynwood for anything unless for, to paint something, you know, but it's not to like, I, I don't know. It's just not, it doesn't have the vibe that it used to have where it was like, you could walk around, go to different galleries, talk to people, you know, it's, um, it's not like it used to be. Um, and so, you know, things are fanning out. We got little Haiti and what over here and, uh, what do you call this? Alapata. Alapata. <laughs> um, what, what do I West see? West of Wynwood. Wasn't I mean, that basically... going for a while? West of Wynwood? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think that, um. Yeah, it's, you know, as long as the, you know. So here's my question. Do you think that it's really a neighborhood problem? Is it that Wynwood, oh, the art is priced out and now there's no artists anymore. And so it's all kind of sterile and commercialized. And it's, you know, and that's why, you know, like you're saying the vibe, you know, it's a different vibe. It's not the same vibe. Um, what comes is out it of that or is it is it just that the scene itself has evolved beyond winwood in the sense of you know i've had kind of the experience where you know with the average joe's with you know things we're doing at yo space in little haiti uh and you know little haiti is that other discussion of like oh it's the next winwood but you know you also have little havana that's going through that stuff mm-hmm. like leah arts district like mass district in broward like those neighborhoods are starting to pop up all over so theoretically it should be easier than ever to have that experience of oh i'm gonna go to my, that neighborhood and i'm gonna walk around and galleries and this and that right is it just that the people who were involved in actively collaborating and cultivating that scene that we, you know, that we're talking about back in like, let's say 2005 to 2010 have moved on? Like, you you know, we're like everyone is now like, is that a natural evolution? Think about, you know, go back to like Greenwich and Soho and like the mm-hmm. Boscots and, and Worlds and Sharfs of saying at a certain point they they grow, they outgrow the environment that yeah that built that that that, that makes turned sense. them into the people who they now are right and you can't have it both you can't be oh, i learned all these things and i made these connections and uh, i have all these opportunities now and you can't still go to the party that you used to and be as like carefree and like oh yeah i'm just meeting the because at a certain point yeah there's always new people coming into the scene but they're not going to have the same perspective or the same experiences as you so you have less automatically to bond over to to you know build a rapport over so maybe it's just that and that's something i you know i struggle with today with like average joe i'm like oh it's not you know it's not how it used to be back in the day everyone used to come out and hang out um and it was just because we were getting together, we were, you know, trading war stories and, oh, this is happening. Oh, look at this idiot's up to like this week or whatever. And, <laughs> and where now everyone's like, everyone has their own, you know, universe to deal with of like, I have this project, I have that project, I'm paying rent, a relationship, this, whatever it is. Yeah. I'm kind of realizing it's maybe it's not Winwood, maybe it's us, you know, like we've, we've outgrown it. I guess. I mean, you can't recreate Winwood, that's for sure. I know that, um, you know, it's, it's like, uh, it's like one of those things where it happened. It was, you know, it was really cool and everyone recognized it. And now, like you said, all these other spots, they're trying to create that. Right. 
and they're they're always going to be lesser for that because they're always going to be held up to this well it's not like it was then it's like because it can't be well well i don't know if it can't be it can be their own thing you know what i mean Right. But it won't be even Winwood. Right. You know, so. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying it can't be its own thing, but it's always going to be its own spin on sure. what, you know what I mean? It's always going to be compared to. I oh, think, absolutely. Until. For sure. Until the people like us who, you know, turn into these old people who are like, you know, if you talk to someone today who was around like during Greenwich. Oh, yeah. Like back and you would just see Bob Dylan, like, you know, playing at the corner <laughs> cafe, whatever. Like until it's that, I think that's what gives the the opportunity for a new version with the kind of same feel to happen because otherwise you're always comparing it to what you know the good old days sure absolutely (laughs) everyone's good old days is different because of how old they are and their own personal experience right (laughs) you know Um, so so a quick thing to end off on just so we talk about your actual art. Cool. Uh, so your your style today, I mean, I've seen it evolve over the last, what, like five or six years, um, if not more. And, uh, you know, I remember back in the day you were doing much more. You were doing like some stencil stuff and very raw, like gritty abstract um, work that was obviously influenced by graffiti. Mm-hmm. Uh, up to today when you're doing these like abstract patterns and um, these roller uh, pieces like where they're, you know, they're also abstract, but a a different uh, feel to them. Uh, And in a quick like way, how do you, how did you get from that graffiti style to now? I mean, I think it's still influenced by graffiti, but it's a little more uh, maybe polished is the word or like, yeah. uh, Um, Well, I think my work is always, um, influenced by graph always it's you know rooted in that um and the techniques that that i've been doing or that i you know that's sort of like a natural progression of um starting from when i started painting canvases at the gallery in the grove alt space gallery when i would just i wouldn't use a brush i'd just take some paint and a scraper an actual like a thing you would scrape paint you know Mm. chips off and i would move paint around like that and that was how i was creating my backgrounds for these you know stencil uh clean whatever images um and it all comes i think the roller stuff comes from that um the geometric stuff so i started doing this you know the spray skull series where Mm. i'm uh recycle i save all my cans and caps and i recycle such a green artist well <laughs> i you know at heart i think i'm you know i'm concerned about the you know i'm one of those people right i like to keep the sink off you know it's if, if we don't need it you know <laughs> make sure we don't re- you know like it's funny in miami nobody recycles right compared to the rest of the I world think, like, or the rest <laughs> of the country anyways you move out west it's like everyone's very strict about it um so yeah so i started recycling my cans and um i came up with this idea to make these hexagon shapes with the spray cans actually i never made the connection to those pieces and it's so obvious now that you just said it (laughs) so that's where yeah and that's where those those paintings started coming from where i was i'm making these these hexagon pieces with the triangles in them and using these patterns to create that and then at the same time like oh i'm gonna like transfer this into a painting and that's where it all started now i'm doing walls with this big geometric patterns and stuff yeah and that's and that's where it came from well we'll put up some pictures like before and after for people (laughs) to uh to visualize but yeah uh uh, Jay did these really this cool series where it was uh, he would cut up strips of uh, of spray cans and have them flat and basically do a mosaic in these uh, geometric shapes. Um, we'll post pictures. Uh, all right, I think we got to wrap it up. So um, this is your chance to plug whatever you want to plug. Tell uh, people where to find you if you have any uh, shows or projects you want them to know about coming up. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, well. I mean, I, don't I should know. have told you to write down it's, a list. Before. It's all. I mean, it's you know, I'm I'm doing a group show at uh, Cafeina. I think it opens this week. Yeah, they're doing like a revamp. Yeah. That's how Nate was. Uh, yeah. So I'm in that with them. 
uh, shout out to the Miami Independent Thinkers. Those girls always right. have my back. Yeah. Yeah. I did scope with them twice. So that was pretty Yeah, awesome. they go back a while. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I did a show with them at their gallery on, uh, on Northwest 2nd when they yeah. had it too, which was cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they, they, they look out for me. So I got love for those girls and Carrie as well. Um, and I'm going to Chattanooga this weekend for the, uh, for the Burning Bridges Jam. I think it's Ivan's going on that. Burn it, yeah, yeah, Ivan's going. A bunch of Miami heads are going. Um, and uh, shout out to Galera Collective. I'm doing a show up in Delray, group show with That's um with these guys. Where the money's at, Delray. Delray, yeah, yeah. hey, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, I'm doing, I'm curating the murals at Sunfest in May up in uh, Palm Beach. It's like a music festival on the Yo, yeah, beach, it's like right? the huge... I'm thinking of Tortuga, but It's that's not on the it's beach. Like a, it's like uh, downtown West Palm. Yeah. And, um, yeah. That's you know, yeah. A nice gig. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, for being uh, a contributing member of the Miami Art Scene Society. You know, we'll still... <laughs> the, the verdict's still out, but... Uh, and, you know, and really being an example for younger artists and also for being someone who's actively mentoring them and giving them opportunities um to like you say uh back in the day like you had to put their art up uh that they might not otherwise have word so as always i'm yuval ophir from yo miami stay on top of what's going down with us uh it's at it's yo miami on instagram yo hyphen miami.com and just yo miami all together on uh facebook and come check out some of our events and uh follow all the great artists that Miami have to offer <clears throat> also Joel Radio <laughs>